So now let's quickly talk a little bit about the MyLab website. So at this point, I'm assuming you've already signed up for the website, already have access to your book and have a Pearson account. If you don't have that, please go right now and take a look at the signing up for your e-text tutorial video, and I'll tell you how you do that. Once you've already signed up, you just click the sign in button rather than register. And if you click on it like this, and nothing's happening, there's a few reasons that could be. The first one would be that you might have adblock on. I do, so I'm going to disable that. Or you could have pop-ups or some other security settings in your browser. So after you've disabled adblock, you can refresh and click sign in. You might get a pop-up like this saying you have pop-ups blocked. Um, I found that it doesn't actually matter, but if you're having issues with the site, you might want to make sure that you have pop-ups disabled. It should say how to adjust the settings here if you need help with that. Next is signing in. So you'd put in your username and your password. This wouldn't necessarily be your Western username and password. Rather, it's going to be the whatever username and password you registered with when you were signing up for the e-text. So once you're logged in, you put in your Pearson credentials, you should be presented with a page that looks something like this. This will list all your MyLab courses. So for most of you, this is probably only going to be the CS1032. But if you've taken other Pearson courses in the past, they'll be shown here. So you want to click on CS1032. And this will take us to the Pearson MyLab site. This has a few different things available on the left-hand side. Probably the one that you're going to be most interested in is going to be the e-text. So if you click here, and then click on Pearson e-text, this will load up our textbook. So it doesn't look like much right away, but you can click down here to move pages back and forward. And right now we're just sort of like in the introductory part of the text. Um, that just sort of lists the copyright information. If we wanted to jump a bit faster, we can click on this table of contents here and it lists all the chapters divided by parts. So if we want to read right in, or jump rather right to chapter one, where our first reading is, we could click that. And then we have the actual content of our textbook right here. Now this does have a few nice features that um, make it a little bit nicer than a normal textbook or a physical textbook in that you can add digital bookmarks to mark certain pages that are important to you. You can also do things like search the textbook with the search feature here. You type in here, like we could look at, let's say, Porter. Is in Porter's um, forces. So if we were interested in Porter's forces, we could type in Porter and it would list the images, key terms, content. So it's quite useful and quite a powerful tool. So we could even have definitions under key terms. In this case, a model proposed by Porter that assesses industry, or we could actually find references to it inside our textbook and jump right to them. We have some other tools like navigation. This can uh, let us go through the textbook in a different way. This might be a little bit nicer. We also have the ability to make notes. So if I want to make a note about this, I could highlight it. This would pop up and I could either use a highlighter just to highlight it, or I could put a note. I could say, this is important. And that's great for studying purposes because it makes it easy to come back later, find notes, and keep track of what you thought is important. We can also create our own flashcards for studying purposes and search what we've selected in the text. So if we want to know more about Moore's Law, we could highlight it and then do search selection. And then it'll bring up the definition of Moore's Law as well as where it's mentioned in the textbook. So it's quite powerful. Another great tool is the playlists. And what this is, is basically a computerized voice that will read the textbook to you. So you can select the part of the textbook that you're interested in. In this case, maybe part of chapter one. 
select a section. Q1-2, what is MIS? And as you can hear, it's Management reading the textbook. Management Information Systems, MIS, comprise the development and use of information systems that help organizations achieve their goals and objectives. So if you find that useful, it might be a great tool. Personally, I'd prefer just reading it myself, but this might let you sit back and do something else while you're listening to it. You also have your notebook, and this will list any notes that you've put in the text or anything you've highlighted so you can quickly get back to them and clicking on them will jump you right there. Another great studying tool. And then we have some other studying tools such as flashcards that allow you to sort of like create a question deck. You could either create your own or you can use ones that are already built in. They're usually about key terms and definitions. So we can try practice, items. So in this case, you'd read the question, fill in your answer, and then keep going. You can either skip it or submit it. Some of them are going to be text-based and some of them are going to be um, multiple choice, things like that. But it's an okay studying tool. So now we're back to my lab from the e-text. If we wanted to look at that homework I've been talking about, that's optional. You can go to assignments and it will list all of the homework that you can do here. And I will have stuff from future weeks listed here as well, in case you want to work ahead. So after you've read chapter one, for example, you can click on chapter one warm up and click start. And it will show you a quiz that's going to be mostly multiple choice. That so says, what is an information system? You have some options here, like computer software, hardware and software components, information databases, information technology, and components that interact to produce information. So we've read chapter one, we'd know that it is E. And then you click check answer, and it tells you if you got it right or not. The point here is not to be like a hard quiz, but rather to be a studying aid. The other type of quiz we might see, I'm gonna leave this page, go back to assignments, are the video quizzes. So these work similarly, but they're a little bit different that we'll see. So for the video quizzes, it's still a quiz, but first you watch a little bit of a video, usually linked right there. And this is just going to be a quick, short video by Pearson that discusses something related to the content of the chapter, and then you answer some questions about it. This one's the importance of management information systems. I'm not going to play that whole video, but after you watch that, you'd then go through the quiz and answer the questions. The third type of assignments that we're going to see in my lab are going to be actual Excel and Access assignments. And these weren't going to be quizzes. Rather, they're going to be an Excel sheet or an Access database that you download from the Pearson website. And it will have a Word document that comes with it that lists some tasks to do. So take a look at the Excel one, but they work pretty similarly. So you click here for the name. What this is going to do, so it'll pop up a little window, and it will give you some instructions and some files to download. So click Download Material. You can download them individually or as a zip file. Download that, open it up, and get something like this. And in this case, we have two files. We have an Excel file that we're going to do the work in. That up. And it looks something like this, like an empty template that you're going to have to do some work in. And then it will have a Word document that's some instructions. This basically tells you all the steps that you have to do to this Excel file. And once you're finished, you save it and you upload it to MyLab MIS. And it will tell you how you did and sort of like auto grade it for you. So once you're done, you click on Upload Complete Document. Click Choose File. Navigate to wherever you have it. Click Upload. And Submit for Grading. And Close. So it's a bit confusing because you don't see your results right away. To get to your results, you go back to the main menu, you click on results. You can see that we have two things that we've done. We did that quiz where we only got one right. And we also have 
the Excel part one problem solved. In this case, I didn't do that great because I think I just uploaded a random file. So I click it out, Office Excel part one. You click that and I'll open up this window and it'll tell you exactly what parts you got wrong. So the instruction sheet had a list of steps you had to take with certain values. And if you didn't get it quite right, you'll have like a red mark here and tell you what you did wrong. If you want more information or more hints, you click the arrow and it'll give you either some hints or a description of what may have not been done right. In this case, there's a bunch because I didn't actually check what the file was. So hopefully you'd be actually doing the work and uploading it. So once again, all this is just for your studying purposes. It's not required. So another tool here is the study plan. And this just kind of helps you find different practice quizzes and warm up quizzes for the different chapters and content in the text. So if you click on chapter resources here, you can get additional quizzes and things like that. But there's also additional knowledge extensions. So these are sort of like bonus chapters from the text. And these are some things that sort of add on to what we talk about in the course that might be of interest to you. And there's also flashcards. Which is yet another studying aid. Let's pick a chapter. Pick a topic, let's say data. And procedures and people. Or you can even select all and it will build basically a flash deck for you. It's going to say a topic or a term on one side and it would have the definition on the other. Another great studying aid. So I do highly recommend sort of exploring MyLab MIS yourself because there are tons of different studying things packed into it. Lastly, Pearson does have an option to get a physical copy of the text. However, this will only apply if you already have purchased the e-text. So you can click on the print offer and then click on the loose leaf print offer and it'll present you with a form where you can purchase a loose leaf copy of the textbook. So that means they're basically going to ship you a stack of papers that aren't necessarily bound together that have the content of the text that you could put in a binder yourself. Um, so if you really like the physical form, you can pay, I think, a little bit extra to get that loose leaf copy. This could be a good option if you like keeping your textbooks, because I do believe that Pearson does sh eventually shut off access to the textbook, but that will happen after the course is over. So that's all I have for you in this video. If you have any questions at all about how to use our OWL course site or using the MyLab MIS site, please let me know and I'll try to assist you in any way I can. Thank you for watching and have a great day.